Hello, my name is Ryan Peterson. Welcome back to Cold Hammered Archaeology. Today, we're going to be talking about some basics of archaic copperworking, specifically looking at two different styles of forging methods and the annealing process that links them together. When looking at copperworking itself, you really have two options when it comes to forging, and that is hot forging and cold forging. Now, there's been a lot of debate going back and forth, whether people in the archaic period, woodland period, Mississippian period, whether these people were using either one of these methods. Uh, there have been support on both sides, particularly looking at uh, microscopic structure. And there's also been arguments that no, this is not possible to determine. Um, a big proponent that cold hammering was being used is actually Vernon. He does a microscopic analysis uh, looking at the differences, looking at cold hammering particularly. And he comes to the conclusion with a couple different facts that yes, cold hammering is what it's doing, particularly looking at inclusions. Scott, on the other hand, um, in his microscopic analysis uh, book actually argues that it's, you can't actually tell the difference between if something was being hot hammered or cold hammered. So let's take a quick look at hot hammering of copper. Uh, this video, I'll be using some more modern tools than we see currently in front of me, but it allows you to get a visual of what the actual hot hammering process there is. So let's take a look at that now. And where are we going? Now that we've got a chance to view uh, hot hammering, one thing you'll notice is that hot hammering is in the name. The hot hammering process involves working a piece of copper or any piece of metal for that matter in a hot form. Uh, typically in your uh, cherry bright red form, this allows the metal to have a lot more uh, malleability and it allows the piece to move a lot faster. A lot of metals, it's very difficult to work them in a cold form. Copper, on the other hand, is uh, unique in a lot of aspects, one of them being that uh, you can work it either hot or cold, and that the piece is going to move regardless. But the nice thing about uh, hot hammering is that it actually includes what's called the annealing process as you go. Metals themselves have a crystalline structure. A microscopic crystals actually form the basis of a metal material, an elemental metal material. And when newly formed, they actually form quite large crystals. And as a piece of copper is being worked, these crystals are slowly broken down and become uh, evidently smaller until the piece is, is fully hard worked. When a piece becomes hard worked and the microscopic structure of the crystals of the metal become very small, micro cracking actually starts to form and the piece essentially starts to break apart. This is really what happens with copper if you were to start working a piece and kept working it. In order to solve this problem, uh, people long ago and still today devised a process called annealing. Annealing heats a piece of copper up not quite to the melting temperature, but hot enough that the internal structure recrystallizes. So it gives it, the metal a chance for the crystal structure to regrow. Large crystals are able to reform and the piece is able to be worked again in avoiding this micro cracking process. Now on average, uh, the kind of the low end, what you need for annealing is about 200 to 225 degrees Celsius. Um, ideally you wanna aim more for 400 degrees Celsius all the way up to uh, anything below the, the melting point, which is gonna be at about uh, 1085 degrees Celsius for copper. So you don't wanna melt the piece because that is gonna defeat the purpose of the annealing anyways. But the longer you have the piece heated, the better. Uh, if you were heating at a lower temperature, you do need to sustain that heat for longer versus if you're using a higher temperature, the annealing process is gonna go a lot quicker. Uh, typically during the archaic period, people are gonna be using uh, wood fires in, in this process of annealing. Uh, think of a typical campfire or a bonfire. They're gonna be placing this piece into these fires uh, for the annealing process. Going back to hot hammering, one of the appeals of hot hammering is it actually uh, merges the hammering process and the annealing process together. So, you, so as you're heating the piece up, you're actually annealing it. You're then working this piece hot as the piece is then being worked. It starts to cool. The piece then needs to be reheated so that it can be hammered again. And in this process, you're actually also uh, combining the annealing together with the hammering. Now, the cold hammering process, on the other hand, is also very similar to its name. It's working the piece cold or the piece at room temperature. I will show you a brief demonstration here uh, in front of me. As you can see, I have a piece of copper that has already begun being worked. Uh, it's already formed down into a bar. Uh, one of the nice things about cold hammering is that I can actually uh, hold the piece in my hand as I go. It's not required to have any sort of external holder to do this, but essentially what I'm gonna be able to do is I'm gonna hold the piece in one hand, 
I'm going to be able to use my hammer stone. And as I go along, I'm actually going to be able to work this piece. So uh, again, this is a bar uh, form. So if I, my goal here is I'm, I'm working on thinning this out a little bit. So I'll, I will uh, give a brief demonstration hammering on this bar. As you can tell, I'm able to uh, work this piece while it's cold. The metal uh, is going to move a lot slower than it's going to move with uh, hot hammering, but essentially I'm able to do the same result. But I'm able to uh, hold and manipulate the piece a lot better. Um, for a bar like this, it might not be as important, but when you begin to work uh, finer, smaller pieces, this becomes a lot more important for having control over the piece. Now, when it comes to which were people using in the past, was it hot hammering, was it cold hammering? The overall consensus right now is that we can't actually definitively tell which method people were using in the past. What we can do is do experiments in which looking at the actual practicality of doing one method versus the other. Now, hot hammering often gets looked at that it wasn't being used because people didn't have uh, things such as modern grips that blacksmiths use to hold a hot piece of metal. But that doesn't mean hot hammering could not have been done, say, during the archaic period in native North America. Uh, it's very possible that organic materials are being used. It has been proposed that uh, splitting a piece of wood and keeping it soaked in water during this process would actually be a very efficient holder. And experimental archaeologists have actually done this. I've actually had uh, good success doing this. It's very smoky, but it does allow you to efficiently hold a hot piece of metal. There's also the, the, um, the idea that we just haven't found out other materials that people are using or we're misidentifying as archaeologists tools that are being used, whether these are made of copper, whether these are being made of uh, some sort of stone, but we're essentially misidentifying uh, tools that could have been used in this production process. The other side of this, of course, is cold hammering. Cold hammering is kind of in the default that most people go to. If you're able to successfully hold the piece, you're able to work the piece uh, quite well. And that's really where most of the evidence comes for this, uh, simply basing it on the fact of how are you gonna be able to hold a hot piece. But as I just mentioned, it is very possible. Now, I personally do most of my uh, work in cold and that's partly due to the setup that I have. My uh, annealing station is uh, in a different part of the metal shop. So I have to go across that to do the annealing. Uh, but also partly because I am a, uh, a kind of a, a fan, or I guess a believer that cold hammering was likely uh, part of the main process. That being said, uh, most more than likely it was a combination of the two factors. There's pros and cons to each one, depending on what you're trying to do. A really good example of this is that with hot hammering, the piece is a lot more malleable. And what this means is you're gonna be able to move the piece of copper a lot quicker. So each hammer stroke is gonna be more efficient and it's gonna deform the copper more efficiently than if you were to hammer it cold. What this means is, is if you're cold hammering, it's gonna take a lot longer to hammer out the same piece than it is to do it hot hammered. That being said, that isn't always a benefit. If you're trying to go for something where you need more control, where you need to be able to handle the piece a little more delicately, such as the formation of beads, such as the formation of an edge, it may be more efficient, may be more beneficial to do the cold hammering method in which you're able to uh, hold that piece, strike more accurately, and, and generally have greater control. You also don't have to worry about the piece cooling. As you cold hammer, you can take your time. Yes, the piece will begin to uh, work hard as you go and it will need to be annealed, but you can take your time in that process. If you're hot hammering, you have the time that it takes the piece to begin to cool. So you are working on a clock. You also need constant access to a hot fire for either of these methods. The difference being that with cold hammering, it can be take place between, whereas hot hammering, you're gonna need this hot fire going right next to you the entire time you're doing the hammering process. So overall, there's uh, again, a lot of differences between uh, cold hammering and hot hammering. But again, it's really the annealing process that brings them together. As a piece is being worked, you're able to recrystallize this structure. And this is what uh, gives copper the ability to be worked both cold and hot is that annealing process.